Many, many of them. Sometimes we do human studies without knowing it. Okay? There are times that I, I hear people, oh, well, just put an implant in and see if it works. Okay? For most patients, there's no problem. For these patients, we do have a price to pay. Okay? Um, Romanis, Eleni Romanis is the chair, of, uh, chair professor in uh, UCLA right now. Um, Nimi is from Japan. But you look at the locations, maxilla, 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 mandible, craniofacial sites. We're talking about eyes, ears, nose, okay, making faces, all right? When we started making faces, making osteointegrated implants, using osteointegrated implants for faces, then we realized that the success rates are not the same, okay, because the bone bed is not the same. In the oral cavity, even though posterior maxilla is known to be the worst area, but it's still pretty much similar to the mandible. But say an orbital implant, implants in orbit area, compared to the implants in the auricular areas, the success rate is dramatically different. We pick this one out, okay, again, there's some typo here, don't worry about the numbers too much, but survival rate of the 70, 71 patient, 5,000 centigrades. non irradiated would have about 75%, irradiated 72%. Now the key in here is this, I want to highlight is the fields. If somebody tells you that I have 6,000 centigrade of radiation therapy, it doesn't mean a darn thing to me or to you. What if it's in breast? It doesn't impact our integration. If it's in lower jaw, it doesn't impact your maxillary. If it's in the posterior ear, okay, it doesn't affect your anterior oral cavities. So the key word is the dose to bone, the dose to the bone that you're dealing with, all right? Not the number per se. Of course, if you don't even know this number, it's terrible. And in this case, 5,000 centigrade, these are very low dose, very, very low dose. Remember, tumoral cytal dose is 6,000 centigrade, and this is only 5,000 centigrade, all right? If you look at the data a little bit further, they realize that, hey, look, one year, irradiated 93%, not too bad. But after eight years, not that great. You have to deal with almost 30% of problems. Okay, life would be a, quite a bit worse if we have to deal with 30% problems. But non-irradiated tissue bed, we find that about 95% after eight years. And this is similar to what we expect in normal subjects, right? Okay. Another, another series, 6,000 standard grade, and this one, again, there's no description if the implants in the synthesis or not. Why is it important? Because most of the cases, many of the cases, original brand marker protocol is to place implant in the mandibular synthesis. If it happened that this particular group, they look into this, but they did not specific, specify where the radiation was delivered to, and if they happened to place the implants in the anterior mandible, which is out of the radiation field, then they actually are doing something very, very safe, which is onto normal bones not compromised bone. But what they found out is that success rate is still lower. Grainstrom, ENT, Gothenburg, what they found out was that only 63% success rate in 15 implants in the mandible. Now, no hyperbaric oxygen. No hyperbaric oxygen. Maxilla. Romanus, Nimi. I don't know if you want to try this, okay? My suggestion is that don't try this at home, all right? Now, osteoidal necrosis, this patient has squamous cell carcinoma of the lateral tongue, resected 6,600 centigrade of radiation therapy. Okay, right behind this area. Implants replaced three years post-treatment. All right, look quite darn good. However, we start to see dehesion at one of the implants. What to do? Antibiotics, you know, debridement, sweet talk the patient, buy him coffee. Doesn't help. Pathological fracture. All right? This is not a scare tactic. These are real patients. Okay? Eventually, he has to be reconstructed with a fibula. Not once, twice, because the first one failed. Okay? Fibula free flap has a success rate of about 98 to 99% worldwide. Okay? He has to fail at least once. Okay? At the end, this guy was very, very nice. Um, managed to, the clinician managed to sweet talk him, and this one, this time it worked, to ask him to donate his mandible post mortem. Okay, uh, that's another story. Okay. Okay, how about hyperbaric oxygen? Okay, 
Again, I know this is out of syllabus, so um, data is unclear. May help, okay? He found that it may help in this series, okay? And the success rate appeared to be higher, and the risk of osteoarthritis necrosis may be reduced. The most important, I think, in this statement is that the reduction in the osteoarthritis necrosis. You lose an implant, no big deal. Honest, no big deal. But osteoarthritis necrosis, we saw the case earlier, not something too fun. Um, we, we saw this a little bit earlier. Uh, what he found out is that in his series, he found out is that without HBO, more implants lost more osteoarthritis necrosis, okay? And the question is that in Singapore, who can do this? I mean HBO. There are some people, but not everybody can. Most medical doctors don't even know what it is, all due respect, all right? So, the question is still the same. Is it biological or mechanical anchorage? With HBO, maybe we have a little bit better repair to the cells, to the vasculature, maybe we have a slightly better chance. Um, Again, how about the cancer side of those, the impact of timing? Earlier we talked about Jacobson's research, and some people say, okay, don't place implants in the first year, place it on the second year, third year onward, then you'll be fine. However, what we found out is not the same. <laughs> um, we found that actually the tissue actually do worse with time. It doesn't really recover over time, okay? It doesn't really fully recover. The longer the time it is, the worse is the result. Now, there are two views in this. So one view is like what I said, because of time, actually it do worse. Some people say is that, oh, because those are old radiation technique, they're more tissue damage, and that's why those people do worse. Now, no matter what's the reason, the end result is that it, it does worse. And remember, the morbidity is not just losing an implant, okay? Could be losing a big part of the jaw. The recommendation, uh, again, expand it a little bit, not just on the CPG. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we do it for a dentalist patient if they really have no choice, if they really wish to have it. Risk the reward ratio. Okay, think about it. If you happen, which seldom happens, to have an osteoarthritis necrosis in the maxilla, compared with a mandibular osteoarthritis necrosis, which is more common, what's the, what's the downside? The worst case is that you have a fracture in the mandible, it becomes too fragment. Okay, it will be a significant reduction in the functional uh, aspect of the patient. If you have just one piece of a necrotic bone in the maxilla, again, seldom happens, it doesn't affect the patient, doesn't impact the patient from a functional point of view that much. Okay, and very, very important is to understand the dosimetry okay, the distribution of the radiation therapy, and also understand that many of these patients have tumor, and 80% of the recurrence always occur in the first year. Second year, slightly less. Third year, slightly less. Five years, we say hallelujah. Okay, it doesn't mean the person will live forever and ever. And maybe we go for longer implants because we need to enhance it mechanically. We need to have slightly better me mechanics, okay? Meaning what? Maybe better occlusion, splinting, rigid framework, limited cantilevers. Again, these are anecdotal, not evidence-based. But scale back, the, 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 the bottom line is that to be safe, to be very, very safe. Those HP below 5,500 centigrade may be okay. All right? Maybe. Less success. Tumorocidal dose, normal tumorocidal dose. Well, many factors to think about. Okay, so don't don't read that one or two report and say that it is okay. Uh, a few years back, we have a we have a series of article in SDJ saying that radiation doesn't impact osteointegration. Okay, yes, there was the time when I just arrived in Singapore. I can tell you, my emotional status was very very high. All right, uh, high dosage. What happened? Sorry for the typo. As promised, there are. So you have to think about hyperbaric oxygen or maybe no implants. Okay, how about the newer implants? Okay, there's the last slide. Newer implants, such as what? Those are with the magic solution, uh, nano treater, single edge, double edge, cutting edge. Well, probably not. Because the problem is not in the implant itself, but rather on the holes. Okay, it's the tissue. Okay, so it may not help the newer implants. And there's really no data in that one way or the other. Uh, lots of re references. Uh, I won't bore you with that. Thank you very much.